Hello, David Snowpeck here, and this is part seven of a tutorial series about using the Git version control system with a game project using the Godot game engine. So last time we talked about doing a three-way merge uh, using Git um, on a GD script file, both with and without merge conflicts. This time we're going to talk about much the same thing, three-way merging, but instead of with a GD script file, we're going to be talking about a Godot scene file. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the scene file format, uh, what an actual con what the actual contents of a TSCN file look like, uh, three-way merging a scene file both with and without merge conflicts. However, um, we are only going to be doing git on the command line this time in order to save time. Uh, normally in this tutorial series we've always done the command line and in the GUI, but we're basically doing the same stuff with Git, at least, in this part as we did in the last part. So if you want to know how to do what we're doing today, but in the GUI, go check out part number six. All right. And we're going to be talking about tips for team collaboration and avoiding merge conflicts in the first place. So let's get started. I'll switch over to my Windows VM here. Uh, this is the project that we've been working on through this whole tutorial series. We have a very simple main scene with a node to D as the root node, a couple of sprites, and let's go check out what that actually looks like in the .tscn file, the file that contains this scene. Here's the, the project files. I'm going to right click on the main.tscn, edit with Notepad++, and take a look. So. Uh, there's a little header here saying this is a GD uh, scene, uh, some file format information. Uh, it lists the resources that are contained in this scene. We have a resource for the uh, icon.png, that's the Godot icon that we have moving around in this game. Uh, the main.gd, which is of type script, uh, that's the script file for this game. And the background.jpg, which is another texture, just like the texture up here, uh, which is that grassy background that we have, and each of these things have an ID uh, within this file. And then down here we have all of the nodes, and this kind of reminds me a little bit of an INI file in that you have these like little header sections, so this is the node name main of type node to, node2d, and then all of the properties underneath here are properties on that node. So it's setting the script for this node is resource ID number two, which we can find up here, is the main.gd. And one thing you'll notice is that the properties listed are only the properties that are changed from their default values. So it doesn't show all the properties of the main node, just the ones that have changed. So just that a script has been attached. So we have the, the main node here with just that one property change, the script. The next node we have is the background node. It is a sprite node, and its parent is the root node in this scene, meaning the main node. So that's what gets the hierarchy. And then it has its position set to a, a non-default value, to this random vector 2 that we placed it at. And it has its texture assigned to resource ID number 3, which is this background texture. So same kind of stuff with the sprite node, uh, you know, name sprite, type sprite, parent is the top level node in the scene. We have a position set for it and a resource for the texture, which is ID number one and the icon.png. So the scene files, the .tscn files are just plain text files that are relatively human understandable. You can kind of look in there and see how this relates to the scene that we had uh, over in the Godot editor and they're very line based. So like kind of each new piece of information is on a separate line, which makes them ideal for merging with Git. Um, so first up, we are going to uh, do a merge of a scene file without a conflict. And to do that, let's open up uh, Git in the command line for our project here. We right click and go to Git bash here. And let's see, we have a bunch of branches. Uh, we have the master branch and the develop branch. We're starting from the develop branch. Uh, we are going to set up a scenario where two developers, Alice and Bob, make changes to the same scene file. Like in the last part, uh, we're going to do that with two separate branches for Alice and Bob within the same checkout. 
Um, if this was happening in the real world, of course, Alice and Bob would be on separate computers with their own separate checkouts of uh, this Git repo. Uh, but to save time and to keep things simple, we're just going to do separate branches uh, in the same repo. It makes no difference uh, when it comes to actually merging stuff, whether it's on separate machines or, or just the you know different branches on the same machine. So we're going to start by uh, creating a new branch for Bob. So we do we do git space checkout space dash b space Bob. And let's go make a change in the editor. We are going to add a timer node to our scene and save it. And if we go back to our git command line here and do git space diff, we can see that at the end of our main.tscn file, uh, a new entry was added for the timer, name timer, type timer. It's still a child of the top level node. That all looks good. We're going to do git space commit space dash a to commit that change. And we're going to say added, or actually I'm going to put Bob colon added a timer. So we can remember that this commit was supposedly done by Bob. All right, let me save that, close this. The commit is made. We can look at git space log and see uh, this commit from Bob about adding a timer. All right, now we are going to uh, make a new branch for Alice and make her changes. But before we do that, we're going to close the Godot editor. When you are switching branches, it is always a good idea to close the editor before you switch branches. Um, and that's because the editor has some of the data from your project loaded into memory. And when we change branches, we're like changing all of the files underneath, which creates the situation where the uh, what the editor has in memory and what is on disk are out of sync, and that can cause problems. The main one that I've seen is uh, the editor will still have like a version of a file loaded from the branch I was on previously, and then when I go to save in the editor, it's going to like put those changes from the branch I was just on, not the branch I'm on currently, but that I was just on, and save that into the file system, which we don't want. So I recommend whenever you are changing branches to always close the Godot editor first, change branches, and then open it again. So we are going to do git space checkout develop, because that is the branch we want to start from. That's where Alice is starting her work. And then we're going to do git space checkout space dash b Alice to create Alice's branch starting from where the develop branch was. So if we do git log, you can see you know, Bob's change isn't here. So we're going to reopen the Godot editor. You can see that the timer added by Bob isn't here since we went back to the state things were on the develop branch. And Alice is going to rename the sprite to player. So we'll make that change, save, going to go back to the git command line here, do git space diff. We can see the change that was made. The old line had name equals sprite, and the new line has name equals player. So we're going to do git space commit space dash a, and we'll enter Alice's commit message. So Alice uh, renamed sprite to player. Save that, close it. The commit is created. If we look at git log, we can see uh, Alice's new commit there. All right, so now we're going to merge these all back into the develop branch. So we're going to do git space checkout develop because that is where we, want, where we want to merge the changes to. First, we're going to merge Bob's changes. So git space merge space Bob. And that is just a simple fast forward merge, no problem. Ooh, uh, I just did the thing I told you guys we should not do. I changed branches with the editor open. So let me close the editor. And if it asks you to save anything, if you do the thing I just did, where like you forgot to close the editor, uh, go close it as soon as you can. And if it asks to like save any changes, just say no. Just don't save those changes, because that is what will potentially mess things up. So anyway, we merged Bob's changes. Now let's do git merge Alice to merge Alice's changes. And we can see over here that it was able to auto merge main.tscn. And then it gives us this uh, the notepad plus plus editor to enter the commit message for this merge commit. Um, and it gives you a default merge branch Alice into develop. I think that's fine. Uh, you can change that if you want. But I'm just going to save this and uh, close it. And now if we look at the git space log, we can see we have Bob's changes, 
Alice's changes, and then the merge commit, which is uh, what's combining uh, Alice and Bob, what's resolving the conflict, which uh, Git did for us automatically. And if we open up uh, the Godot editor again, you can see that we have the timer that Bob added, and we have the rename that Alice did, changing sprite to player. So we have both of their changes merged together. We didn't have to do anything special to resolve the conflict. Git was able to auto merge it. So everything worked ideally, like this is perfect. This is the ideal scenario. You know, one person does one set of changes, another person does another set of changes, merge, and it just works automatically. That is not always the case, as we are about to see. Uh, that sometimes you can have merge conflicts that Git can't work out where you're required to resolve that manually. So I'm going to real quick uh, reset the state of our project back to the way it was uh, before we did all those changes, and we will do another example, but this time with a merge conflict. All right, now we are back on the develop branch, and we are going to start by, again, creating a branch for Bob. Git checkout dash b Bob. And we'll open the Godot editor. All right, this time we are going to have Bob change the starting position of the sprite. So we're going to drag it from the sort of top left down to the bottom right and save that. We'll go to our git command line here, git diff. We'll see that uh, we are under the node sprite. Um, and what is changing is the vector two for position has changed from this value to this value. So that all looks good. Do git commit dash a uh, Bob change sprite starting position. Save that, close the editor. Do git log to see the new commit there. And now we're going to quick close the editor so that we can Oops. So that we can uh, make a new branch for Alice. So first we're going to check out the develop branch again, because that's where we are starting from, and then do git checkout dash b Alice, and reopen the Godot editor. Now you can see the sprite is back to its original position. Uh, Alice is also going to change something on the sprite. She's going to change the z index from 0 to 1. And we're going to save that. If we go to our git command line, do git space diff, we can see that this is adding a new z index property, which equals 1, right below the position property and above the texture property. So you can do git commit dash, oops, commit dash a, Alice, um, change sprite z index. Close that, git log, we can see our change from Alice. And now I'm going to quickly close the Godot editor, and we are going to merge all of these changes together and see what happens. So first I'm going to switch to the develop branch, git checkout develop, and we're going to do merge Bob's changes first, git merge Bob. That's just a simple fast forward merge, everything is fine. Now we're going to do git merge Alice. And it does auto merging main.tscn, but it hit a conflict. There is a merge conflict in main.tscn. We have to fix the conflicts and then commit the result. So we are going to go uh, and edit the main.tscn with Notepad, just directly editing the scene file. You can see that it has added these merge conflict markers here, uh, which we talked about in the last part. This one sort of denotes um, this is the state of this line in the current head, which is Bob's changes, since we merged Bob's changes first. And then after this equals sign here, uh, the bunch of equal signs, uh, we have the state of these lines as they are on Alice's branch. And what we want in this situation is to actually combine the changes that both Bob and Alice made. We want to have Bob's position change, and we want to have Alice's z-index change. So we just manually do that. Uh, we'll delete the marker there, and the equal sign, and the position from Alice. So now we have Bob's position, the z-index from Alice, and then we just need to clean up this marker here, save it, close it. We can go to the command line and see git 
diff. Uh, we can kind of get these dual plus signs showing the changes coming from all of the different places. We can see that the old position is removed, the new position is added, and then also the uh, Z index is added. And all that looks good. So to uh, complete this merge, we have to do git commit um, and the file that we have resolved the commits in, resolve the conflict in, or I'm sorry, not git commit, git add main.tscn. Um, and now uh, we do git commit. And we get uh, basically the same default message that we got when there were no merge conflicts, some additional comments explaining to us what the conflicts were. This is all the same stuff from the previous uh, the previous uh, part of this tutorial, the previous episode. Uh, I think this message is fine. We're just going to save this, close it, and now that should be merged. Let's look at git log. We can see we have Bob's change, Alice's change, and the merge commit. Um, so let's open up the Godot editor and make sure everything looks OK. All right, so the sprite is in the bottom right uh, corner where Bob moved it. And if we look at its properties, we have a Z index of one like Alice uh, did. So you can see that it's possible to resolve merge conflicts manually by editing the TSCN file, just like we did with the GDScript file in the last part. But I think you should also be able to see that this can really, really get out of hand. Um, if you have a ton of nodes in a scene and two people are making just a ton of changes, adding, removing nodes, adding tons of properties. The merge conflicts can be really difficult to resolve, um, you know, going through them piece by piece, trying to figure out like, well, which property change do I want from whose version? Um, so it can get very hairy, which is why it's important to do whatever you can to try and avoid merge conflicts in the first place, which is the next thing we are going to talk about. Get back to my presentation here. There we go. So some tips for avoiding merge conflicts. Uh, avoid massive scenes that cover a lot of things. Like it's totally possible in Godot to make your game in just one giant scene with like a hundred nodes. Of course, there's other reasons to to not do that, to uh, split up your scene to to split up your game into many many scenes um, beyond just dealing with Git. Like that's just a good idea, uh, but it definitely helps with uh, avoiding merge conflicts. Ideally, each scene should have a single coherent purpose, so that uh, if you're editing that particular scene, uh, it means you're working on that thing. And then you can um, communicate with your team <laughs> to try and avoid big changes to the same scene files. So if each scene has its own responsibility, that becomes really easy because one team member is like, oh, for the next bunch of days, I'm going to work on this. So, you know, don't touch these scene files. Another team member, you know, I'm going to work on this. So, you know, don't touch those scene files and just avoid changing the same things around the same time. And if the scene files are smaller, that also means that like the possibility for conflicts, even if you do need to change the same scene files, like is just smaller and simpler to to resolve those problems. Uh, there are some useful functions of uh, the Godot editor for uh, breaking things up into scenes. We'll just take a look at that really quickly. Um, this scene isn't a really great example for this, but imagine that our uh, you know, player node here had more stuff on it, like it had a, a timer and a um, animation play, uh, not an animated sprite. That doesn't make sense. Of course, this example needs to make sense. It doesn't need to make sense, but um, animation player. So imagine, you know, you build out your first scene, you build out uh, a node that is your player. It starts to get a little complicated and you say, this should really be its own scene. Uh, you can right click on that node and go to save branch as scene and make a whole new scene. Save it. So now we have a player.tscn, which we can open up, which just has the player and its nodes. And if we go back to the main.tscn, you can see that there's now just a single node, which is a instance of this other scene. And you can create uh, many more instances by clicking the little chain link guy there and picking another scene. And we can create a bunch of different 
instances of that scene inside of our scene. Of course, that's super useful for lots of other reasons. Uh, you know, you'd make a scene for your enemies and then you'd instance it several times for each of the enemies. So a good thing to do anyway, but extra important to make sure you're doing that uh, if you're using Git and collaborating with other people. Another interesting technique is using scene inheritance to have separate scenes for different roles. And scene inheritance is actually a useful functionality anyway. It's mostly used when you say like, okay, I'm gonna make like a character scene and both the player and the enemy is going to descend. Both of those scenes are gonna descend from the same player scene. So you can have the player scene kind of have like shared functionality uh, for both of those two player and enemy scenes. But there's another use uh, which I think a lot of people don't know about or doesn't occur to them is that you can use scene in inheritance to have like one scene be created by an by the artist or the art team and then that person or team owns that scene and then rather ha than having the programmer or programming team come in and change the scene that the artist created they would instead inherit uh, from that scene and make a new scene where then the programmer or programming team adds like the game logic and the scripting and like maybe like extra nodes that they need to to make that happen like timers and particle systems and whatever. If I were using that technique, I would create a folder uh, called let's say skins for the scenes created by the art team. Let's do a new scene here. We'll call it uh, I don't know uh, character one. And this is where the art team would, you know, maybe create uh, the sprite and an animation player. And uh, just so we have something to look at, we'll put the, the Godot icon in that sprite. And here, let's save this in the, oh, yeah, I already told it to go in the skins folder. So we have this character onetscn in the skins folder. So let's imagine that the art team got this looking uh, and you know, moving with the animations and everything the way they wanted, and was ready to hand it off to the programming team. Uh, but rather than just editing the scene, instead we would have a separate folder we will call, let's say, actors. And uh, we will inherit from this scene. So I'm going to right click and say new inherited scene. So now we have a new unsaved scene with the same stuff inherited. I'm just gonna save this really quick under actors as character one. So now we have a new scene uh, under actors and the programmers can go, okay, we're gonna attach a script here, you know, create that script uh, to make uh, this do what we need to do. We need like some kind of timer, maybe a cooldown timer so you can make sure that the uh, player doesn't just keep shooting forever or whatever. Uh, matters for your game. And this way, uh, the artist and art team can continue to work on the character one scene under skins and do whatever they want to do with it. And the programmer can work on the character one scene under actors and do whatever they want on it. And no matter what, they will never conflict because they're dealing with two separate files. Um, so that's a, a, a kind of novel use of scene inheritance to avoid conflicts. Uh, but this same kind of thing can also be done with composition too, not just inheritance. And the way that would work in practice is uh, rather than having the um, uh, this scene under actors inherit from the skin scene, it would just instance it. So let's we'll delete the actors character one and kind of start over using composition. So in this case we would create a completely new scene. Still gonna call it character one. Um, and we would instance the character one scene under from uh, skins. So change the names here to maybe make this a little more clear. We would have uh, this new scene that is uh, for the programmers created and edited by the programming team. And we would add you know, our uh, script there and add uh, you know, the timer node or whatever under this node, and we would instance this skin uh, scene that the artists created. So this is really uh, the same point as the initial one about avoiding massive scenes and splitting it up into many scenes, having each scene having a single coherent purpose. So in this case, we're taking what might be a single character scene, which deals with both appearance and logic, 
and instead breaking it up into two scenes where one scene is just concerned with the appearance of that character and another scene is just concerned with the like game logic of that character. And that's something that maybe you wouldn't do uh, otherwise, if you weren't doing that to facilitate team collaboration in Git, maybe you would, like if you had a character that could like swap out which skin it had, because uh, you could have a character look many different ways. But this is an instance where you would just purposefully break up a scene into these two separate purposes to make it easier for your team. All right, uh, and one quick tip for resolving merge conflicts in scene files. So, so far, we've resolved merge conflicts in a text editor by like manually editing the text of the file in Notepad++. Uh, but you don't have to do them only in a text editor. There's another really useful feature of the Godot uh, editor, which is this merge from scene function. And so what I do sometimes when I have difficult merge conflicts and one of the uh, branches that I'm merging added a lot of nodes to the scene is rather than trying to go through with a text editor and resolve it, I copy both .tscn files. So I have uh, you know, the .tscn file that's about to be merged into and a copy of the one I'm merging from. And I use this merge from scene functionality to pull in all of the new nodes using the Godot editor rather than doing that manually in a text editor. So let's look at that really quick. Um, how are we going to set that up? Uh, yeah, let's say we are going to copy the main.tscn. We'll copy it and paste it right away. And we're going to rename this to, let's say, main Alice. Let's say it's Alice's changes that we're trying to merge. So we would first copy uh, Alice's main.tscn to some other file name like main Alice. And then we would go in the Godot editor and um, we would uh, right click on our the, the node that we're going to be merging these into and say merge from scene. And then we could go select main Alice. And then we can pick and choose nodes from her scene to merge into uh, the current main scene. And of course, this is exactly the same as the scene we're merging into because we didn't really set up the situation. We just copy and pasted the main thing. But it works how you'd expect. Like we can just say like, oh, maybe Alice added the background um, node, so I just want to merge that in. And it brings that node in from that other scene into this scene, which can be a very useful way to facilitate difficult merge, difficult merges where lots of nodes were added. So that's all I have for this part. I hope all of that made sense. I went through a lot of different tips and tricks and techniques very, very quickly. Uh, so please let me know if there's anything that was unclear, anything that I missed, or anything that in particular that you want to see in future episodes. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.